Let's face it, until a couple of years ago, LGBTQIA plus representation in Hollywood was limited to cisgendered males acting feminine or dressed in drag. However, the misrepresentation we had back then gave us a little bit of hope that one day, we would actually see diversity on screen. That being said, here are Plastic's top 10 films featuring drag. Number 10. Victor Victoria The problem, Mr. Marchand, is that you're preoccupied with stereotypes. I think it's as simple as you're one kind of man, I'm another. And what kind are you? One that doesn't have to prove it. In this musical gender bender of a film, Julie Andrews plays a woman who disguises as a man to pass as a female impersonator. It's a guy. While the plot doesn't sound as absurd or controversial today as it used to then, Victor Victoria was considered to have broken new ground, was nominated for seven Academy Awards, and won for Best Song Score. Mary Poppins in drag. Count us in. Now can we get a remix starring Jinx Monsoon? Number 9. Mrs. Doubtfire Don't tell me not to live, just sit and putter. Life's candy and the sun's a ball of butter. Don't bring around a cloud to rain on my parade. Let's get things straight, pun intended. Straight filmmakers exploiting cross-dressing for laughs is problematic. And when revisited, quite a few jokes come off as cringe. I do voices. Yeah! However, we can't help but keep a soft spot for William's wholehearted performance. As a divorced father posing as a nanny to stay close to his children. And although it fails miserably at demystifying cross-dressing taboos, it's still a beloved classic in many people's minds. Number 8, The Queen. Open up the curtain and take a look at our beauties. Let's hear it for them. This documentary examines the inner workings of the Miss All-America Camp Beauty Contest, a pageant that features drag queens and trans participants vying for the crown. Although it came out to rave reviews, the film went by relatively unnoticed at the time. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Its frank depiction of gender bending, and its candid testimonies about sexual identity, gender reassignment surgery, transgenderism, and the art of drag make this film way ahead of its time. It also features the iconic Crystal Labija. I have a right to show my color, darling. I am beautiful, and I know I'm beautiful. Number 7, to Wong Fu. Thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. When a gay man has way too much fashion sense for one gender. He is a drag queen. Thank you. Although this film is a ton of fun to watch and features a cameo by Rapal, it is also considered to be extremely problematic for asexualizing its gay characters and neutralizing gender. Hmm. Rather than celebrating its diversity. I think tomorrow is a say something hat day. That being said, watching Hollywood action heroes Patrick Swayze, Wesley Snipes, and resident bad boy John Leguizamo fam it up and read each other to filth. I'm the Latina Marilyn Monroe. I got more legs than a bucket of chicken. Will forever be a guilty pleasure. Number six, the birdcage. What's that tone to me? What tone? That sarcastic, contemptuous tone that means you know everything because you're a man and I know nothing because I'm a woman. You're not a woman. Oh, you bastard. <gasps> Nathan Lane plays one half of a gay couple about to welcome their newly engaged straight son. I'm getting married. And his future, ultra conservative in laws, into their home. That's an idiotic issue. Gays in the military. I mean, those haircuts, those uniforms. Who cares? <laughs> and although Robin Williams and Hank Azaria do play gay for laughs, the film is one of the very few to normalize homosexual households. Indeed, no gay character was harmed during the oh, writing man. of this film. Oh. And that in itself was revolutionary at the time. Small wins. Number five, Kinky Boots. Very comfy. Comfy. S shouldn't be comfy. A British instant classic. Kinky Boots is about a drag queen knocking some fashion sense into a failing shoemaker's head. Please, God, tell me I have not inspired something burgundy. Serving both buddy comedy and a small town meets big city culture clash, this film is as endearing as it gets. Number 4, Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Fun.
finally a film that showcases non-pageant drag. Instead, it follows a punk rock drag performer touring America looking for their song-stealing ex. Drawing obvious comparisons to the Rocky Horror Picture Show, this film garnered rave reviews and also spawned a Broadway musical featuring Bimini Bon Boulash. Okay, not really, but it should. They were born for this part. Number 3. Pink Flamingos This is a direct attack on my divinity. Someone will pay for this. Someone will pay with their life for this grossly offensive act. Thank the gay gods for queer filmmaker John Waters. This gay exploitation film is directed, written, produced, narrated, filmed, and edited by Waters. Honey and Raymond Marble, you have breathed your last breath. Described as an assault on decency and good taste, this film follows actual drag queen Divine, the original drag superstar, as she and her band of misfits go out of their way to earn the title of filthiest people alive. Number 2. The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert Written and directed by a gay man, this Australian film stole the hearts of movie viewers around the globe with its fun, full-hearted extravagance. Although the cast is mostly straight, their performances never feel exploitative. Oh, Felicia. But rather empathetic and grounded in authenticity. Also, that $7 thong dress winning an Oscar for Best Costume Design is till this day pretty badass. Number 1. Paris is Burning. So Saying that we're sick, we're crazy, and some of them think that we are the most gorgeous, special things on earth. The mecca of queer film, Paris is Burning, is a vivid reminder that every and any pop culture trend is born in the queer underground, full stop. And I'm like beating my face with blush, shadows, or whatever to the music. Celebrated for its exclusive look at the New York ballroom scene and its raw depiction of its talents adversities. From transgenderism to black queer marginalization and the AIDS pandemic, this documentary is as important now as it was then.